Hey guys, in the last video, I showed you how to create users or how to sign up on Firebase using SAP App Giver. In this video, I will show you how to force users to uh, verify their email ID before they can log in into the app. So let's get started. Now I will switch to my uh, main screen. So uh, this is the app which I built uh, in a last video. So if you haven't seen my last video, I would highly recommend you to go back and watch that. We have two flows here. The first flow is to uh, verify or validate whether the user had verified their email ID. And a second flow is as soon as user signs up, we have to send an email notification so they can uh, verify their email ID. So we are going to alter uh, these two flows. So let's start with the sign up process first. So for that, I will go to the da data here and uh, in a, in a data, we will create the uh, uh, new resource for uh, sending email ID. Now, this is based on the, like I said earlier, this is based on the Firebase Auth REST API. I will leave link down below, or you can find a link in a previous video. So there is a, a function to send email verification if you see it here. What this does is it takes your user ID and then sends a verification link in, in the email. To the email uh, used as a user id so all we have to do is create a resource pointing to this url uh, past the web api key and then along with the request type as a verify email uh, send the uh, id token of the user so that will send the email uh, to verify that email id now this is the this is part of one flow which is the sign up flow now for authentication flow if we if, if we don't change anything as soon as user signs up, they will be able to authenticate themselves and they will be logging, they will be able to log in into the app. But we have to prevent this. To prevent, what we can do is we will put an additional uh, check or additional condition uh, prior to uh, a setting user has successfully authenticated. So it will be like user, user enters their credentials, system authenticate the, authenticates them then extracts user information and then uh, validates whether user has verified their email ID or not. If the verification is successful, then it will uh, allow user to continue. But if uh, verification is not successful or is not complete, then it will issue an error message and it will, uh, uh, it will stay on the same login page. Okay, so that's the theory behind. So let's go to data and let's add a new. Uh, REST API call. Let's call uh, verify email. Uh, this resource URL is the base URL, so that uh, we can copy from here. And this is not different than what we used for sign up, so you can also use that as a reference. Uh, that's the identity that's the base url uh, let's save now we have to add a api key as a query parameter so i will uh, add key call key and there should be a static value so i don't have a static value right now i will uh, i will copy it from uh, from the sign up uh, resource so i'll go to sign up users that's my key back uh, verify email go in here and save so our base url is ready now now let's go to create record because we are going to make a post call now since we did not create any schema this is by default uh, disabled so let's activate or enable that and add the rest of the path from the url so here it says send accounts send ob code so let's go in back add that we don't need to add a, a, a query parameter because we already did that save uh, go back to create now in a schema it's a very uh, easy schema fairly easy because it just has two properties for a request payload and just single property for a response payload 
So let's go in here. Let's create manually. We'll say custom schema, uh, add a property, and we'll just copy it from here. Request type. Uh, instead property, we'll say request type. And as far as I know, this is a constant. So uh, do we have a static here? Add a value. So we'll add uh, verify email. We can do this later also when we map uh, map our ID token. We can pass the other value also. But these are example values. So let's let's leave it that way. And then add another property. So the another the other property is ID token or here ID token. So go in here. Uh, type text. And that's it. So we have ID token and a request type. ID token is the user ID. Uh, as soon as we create a user, it issues an ID uh, issues an ID token. We can we'll take that token and we'll pass it to this function, uh, to to this service. Now, uh, the response schema again it's a custom, and there's only one property that's that is email. So let's say email. I will just verify. Yeah email that's it and save okay so our service is ready let's go back now we have a resource configured for uh, uh verify email now we have to call this resource pass the id token and then system should be able to send a verification email in users inbox uh, that part is automatic we just have to call the service and the service takes care of sending email sending email uh to the user and i will also show you in the fire uh, firebase uh, you can modify your template to have a custom message instead of standard template email template so our de data source is ready now we'll go to our sign up page and on a submit we have this flow here so we create we are creating a use a uh, record user sign up record or user record then we show a um, show message uh, user created successfully and we navigate back to the initial screen so we will time being we will detach these two and then we will uh, use another create uh, flow function this flow function is to post or to call a verify email so create record in here. I will change that to verify email, save. And on success, uh, successful call of this flow function, we do the same things what we were doing earlier. And if there's, a, uh, if there's an issue, so we uh, issue error message like what we did before. The only difference is now uh, after creating user, we are sending email using another create record. And in here, uh, we have to map uh, the user ID and the request type. So let's first map request type. Since this is a constant, we can grab it from the uh, Firebase Authentication Raised API. Uh, and we'll say it's constant verify email. ID token, however, is the token or a user ID token generated right after a user is registered or is user was registered so this we can get it from the previous create uh, function flow function which is create user uh, that you can do it from here um, and by the way uh, if you are using flow functions in app giver you can uh, chain them and you can you can take output from previous one to the next one and from this one you can pass up pass it on to the next one so this is the uh, option in uh, you know uh, to pick to to chain it. So here we can say output value from another node, which is a previous node. So we'll select that, and our logic node is a create record. And here we have the ID token. So this this is a response from the first create record user record. So we need ID token. We'll map that. So we have verify email constant. And from a create previous create record or user create record response, take ID token and save and save. So now technically, as soon as we register a user, this should uh, trigger email 
and we should be able to see that in the inbox. So let's give a try. Now for some reason, um, when I tried earlier, uh, the web preview uh, isn't working. Let me see if it works now. No, it's not working. So what I'm gonna do is I'm, um, I'm gonna use my phone to, to access the app. So instead of web preview, you will see it in, like, in, on actual phone. So let me stop that. Okay, so I have to screen cast, screencast or mirror or whatever is called screen mirroring. Uh, go in. So this is the app, uh, preview app, and then we'll go to the visitor log uh, and sign up. And then I will sign up with my email ID. I will try to use my test id so let's and password let's set it demo one two three and four and submit okay so it says created successfully now as per our logic this should send email to my email id so let me see if i have received my email id and I'm going to pause here. I will resume once I log in. So now you can see it. So I have this email ID. Uh, I received it in my inbox. And if I uh, open that, we have this template where it sends an email and then a uh, few things, the uh, constant things. So first part is done. We were able to create a user and we were able to send a verification link in user's email, user's inbox. Now the second part is now if I don't do anything, uh, I will be able to log in with my uh, email ID, and my password. But that's not the uh, purpose. We have to stop users from logging unless they uh, verify their email ID. So let's move on to the second part. I will go to uh, authentication page. This is where we authenticate users. So. That authentication process takes, takes place when a user enters their email ID and a password, and then they press on a tap, press or tap on login. Uh, the flow function triggers in, it takes the email ID password, it authenticates, uh, hides spinner, then sets the present uh, persistent state. Uh, then it will dismiss the initial view, uh, shows a toast message. And if it fails, it will just alert or it will show an error message. Now, this is a, a, a normal flow without the authentication, without the verification check in between. And that's what we are going to do now. We will put a, a, a validation in between these steps before dismissing our initial view to make sure that the email ID is uh, verified. So uh, let's move it here. We need more space. And the function, so in this case, we have. A default function or we have a function in app driver which we can utilize and that is get current user so we will get this function and whatever successful uh, port or output we have here we will pass into the get user function and these all uh, on a success or a port one we will move to port one on a get current user so kind of we are um, uh, chaining them together. After authentication, we check the status. After that, we decide whether to uh, allow user to continue or cancel the process and send them back or keep them on the same page. So let's remove these uh, links. Uh, so let me go back to core and I'll uh, pick if condition. And then I will connect this if output from our uh, get current user to the if uh, flow function and in a if condition so we'll go here again we'll use the output from the previous node from get user uh, get current user and in here we have there is a attribute or a property which uh, returns true or false if user has verified their email if email is verified it will return true uh, otherwise uh, false so let's use that save 
So we have a condition now. So if it is true, that means the email is verified, then we hide the spinner. Uh, now we are going to connect these all functions. Uh, set the persistence, set auth state persistence, dismiss initial view, show the uh, toast message, and else just show the error message. Okay, perfect. It's, we don't have enough space, but yeah, that will work. And save. Okay, so now if I try to log in using my email ID and a password, this should uh, this should report error message or rather we will make a unique error message so uh, let's take another alert message from here a new one uh, take the if condition false of the if and then we'll add a message the user verification failed. please verify your email ID and save. All right, perfect. Let's go give a try. No, that. Okay. And password demo one, two, three, and four, and log. So as expected, uh, this says the user verification failed. Please verify your email ID. This is because uh, we received the email, but I did not click on the link to verify user. And this is expected behavior. So this way you can prevent users from using someone else's email ID. So let's go back to our email and let's verify our email ID. Confirm. This says your email ID has been verified you can now sign in with your new account so let's give a try we are i'm already on the same page i have already entered password so all i have to do is just press tap login and there you go so this is how you can integrate uh, email verification step in your app driver app for fire uh, firebase uh, you know backend so that's all uh, if you like this video uh, please subscribe to my channel and hit a like button that will help me and that will also help the algorithm to publish it to other people. So if they need a similar solution, they'll be able to find it easily. Thank you and see you next time.